outlining some measures put in place to reduce the impact of the disaster, the Volta River Authority says it is taking steps to address the challenges. Deputy Chief Executive of the VRA, responsible for engineering and operations, Edward Obin Kenzo says, the authority has dedicated a total of 20 million CDs to cater for the excesses. Yeah, we are supporting NADMO. Um, NADMO is the National Disaster Management Organization. They have the expertise in doing this. Uh, we are supporting them with, uh, with the funds that they need in doing this, logistics that they need in doing this. Uh, that is what we are really doing. Uh, so far, uh, we've, we've, we've voted 20 million in support for the activities of that move. Um, we've also uh, given some logistics which has to do with our water tankers to make sure there is water in the community, being supplied to the community. Um, we've also at least um, provided new uh, pumping system at Aveime to make sure there's water supplied to the community because the water, the, the pumps were submerged. Um, all that we are thinking is uh, how do we support NAMPO to make sure the lives are saved? Mm. And that is what we are doing. Our hospital unit is also in the community. So far, we, su we supported them, uh, NAMPO and then the uh, Ghana Health Directorate that in the district with about uh, counting 1.5 million uh, Ghana cities worth of drugs, which we are still going to bring more as needed. Um, working with NADBO, uh, we've, we've also made sure that there are portable loops in the communities uh, in conjunction with uh, Zoom Lion to make sure the portable toilets are being well kept, well clean, so that people can have a place to. Can you uh, can you estimate the... can you estimate how much you have spent so far? Um, so far, per the budget, uh, uh, we, we are somewhere around uh, 6 million Ghana cities. Uh, that is uh, the amount that uh, we, we spent so far. He also assures that the VRA will end the spillage by the end of this, this month. Uh, per, per data, per our data uh, over the period of time, the rains subsides from middle of October, middle of, uh, October to the end of October. Uh, for the past 72 hours, uh, we've had zero rise of the lake, which means the amount of water coming in and the amount leaving the dam is the same, uh, which indicates that the data that we normal, we are, we are, the track that we are following and the data that we have indicate that the rains are subsiding. We are hoping a pair of data means that maybe from today going, we may be seeing negative rise in the dam, meaning that the amount of water coming into the dam is less than the amount that we are discharging. So we have to start closing the gate. Mm. Um, we are definitely sure that before we get to the end of this month, we'll be getting into those negatives and we'll start closing the gate gradually. No guarantees. That's what I hear from you. Oh, it's nature. With nature, you cannot, you cannot say, okay, you, you can say tomorrow rains will stop. No water will come. No. But when we look at our tributaries in the north, uh, Saboba and uh, uh, Nanuli, all the all, all the tributaries are receding. The amount of water coming in are reducing, mm. which indicates that they are enough, they are, the, the volumes in those tributaries into the dams are reducing. But if something rains directly onto the dam. Those are you cannot predict, you cannot determine. Mm. Uh, those are some of the things we are looking out for that it shouldn't happen, that there should be a, uh, a major storm directly on the dam. That can change the track that we are following. So as I said, mm. towards the end of the month, we know that we'll be reducing the amount of volume that we are spending. Uh, In addition to displacing over 30,000 Ghanaians, the spillage of the Kosomo Dam has adversely impacted businesses and livelihoods. In affected area, Harry Kosmo Samevo, a mepe based businessman, says he is traumatized as his trading capital of about 100,000 CDs has already been lost to the devastation caused by the flood. He fears the imminent closure of his business if he does not receive any support immediately. According to him, he struggles to locate his customers who have been displaced across the three-tongue districts, 
making it difficult for him to retrieve his capital. He appeals for government support for the affected businesses while speaking with my colleague, Carlos Caloni. The level of devastation here at Mepe indeed cannot be quantified. Apart from inconvenience caused to residents and the displacement, businesses are equally bearing the brand of this situation. I have with me one businessman to share his story with us. And for him, this definitely is going to kill his business. As to why, we want to know. So give us your name and tell us what you do. I'm Cosmos from Mepe. This entry fellow, for instance, this house belongs to a customer of me. At least a week, it takes close to 1,005 worth of goods. At as now, it's no more to be located. The area in low, I have about 150 customers. They are nowhere to be found. So I can say my business is totally collapsed. So the government has to come to our aid to help us as a business. Us, we, are, we don't know what to do as time goes on. You told me you are into some distribution business. And these people are your customers that you supply goods to. And now that this flood situation is here, you are unable to reach them. And some even owe you. Uh, beyond this community, which other communities do you supply goods to? And what can you tell us about the conditions of those your customers in other communities that have been flooded? The same price to the overbank, that is my party I have a customer who provided the same price to them. They also know where to be found. The same price to Dover, customers there, they know where to be found. The same price to Tokpo. Battle, a suburb of Battle, a village there, the same price. All the customers are nowhere to be found. The same time they own me, that means my business capital is in danger. So what are you going to do now? Mm, for now, I'm traumatized. As a businessman, I have to go back to the drawing board and see what I can do to raise my business again. So if the government or some people who can help us will come to our aid, Will be much happy. I, for instance, as an individual, I need the help. Can you quantify how much you have lost within the space of a week or two? Say, averagely on a day, daily basis, the amount of money you're able to make, on a weekly basis, the amount you're able to make averagely, and these few weeks that you are not able to make that money, the level of loss in terms of uh, money, can you share that with us? Roughly a week daily, I made 15,000 assists. So, our, today is a week that the flood has taken most of my customers. So, 15,000 a day by a week, just multiply and see the level of loss that this that is I've made, yeah, that have cost my business. What do you think um, the government can do? in terms of um, bringing people like you, business people whose businesses have been affected? We will be much happy if the authorities can come to our aid by giving us some amount of money that we invest into our business. But besides that, the people, their houses are nowhere to be found. The houses is in the water. Where are they coming to stay before we'll be selling to them again? So the government have to come to our aid. We want the people whose house is in the mesh of the water, they should find a place for them so that they stay, so that we can also continue our business with them over there. As, as, as it stands now, what do you think the banks can do for business people like you who have lost a lot of money, yet you are owing the banks? What should the banks do so that at least they can alleviate your suffering? The same appeal I'm appealing to the government, I will appeal the same to the banks too, so that if they can give us a grace period, to pay their money for them, or they'll give another capital to invest in the business. All right. So that's the story from Harry Cosmos Amevo. He's a businessman here in the Volta region, uh, North Tong area, uh, who has about uh, 150 customers in this enclave alone, but cut across Central Tong, South Tong, and North Tong 
according to him, most of his customers are nowhere to be found. Their homes have been submerged in the water and locating them is a problem. And according to him, the money he makes daily, he cannot make that money now because of the flood situation. He's appealing to government to come to their aid and to the banks to allow them some grace period so that those who have lost their businesses can come back. Carlos Caloni, join News. Away from the dams belay to some aviation story, government says it has received applications from some international airlines seeking to fly directly from different countries to the Kumasi airport. Deputy Minister of Transport Hassan Tampoli disclosed this at a program to celebrate 90 years of Air France operations around the world. George Uyafe has the rest of the story. The event brought together clients of the airline partners, the business community, as well as members of the diplomatic corps to celebrate the existence of Air France since 1933 as it has been one of the major airlines in flying passengers all over the world to their various destination. Addressing the guests at the event, Deputy Minister of Transport al Hassan Tampoli noted that government is fast-tracking work at the Kumasi airport so it can grant all these requests coming from these international airlines. With the Kumasi International Airport terminal building and then other accessories. What we are left now in order for us to be able to reach 100% completion is to demolish the current terminal building and then finish up with the air traffic control tower, expand the, the runway a bit, and I believe Kumasi International Airport would also be inaugurated to international travel. The Deputy Minister of Transport also announced how government has reduced the requirements for passengers departing and arriving at the Kutuka International Airport to aid travels. All in all, we had about 13 different different steps. Now we have managed largely to reduce the number of steps from 13 to just about four steps, just so that we'll be able to increase the pleasurability of traveling in and traveling out of the country. Eight steps on arrival also has been reduced to three steps. The French ambassador to Ghana, Julius Ahmad Amiabuso on his part, talked about the critical role that the airline has played when it comes to supporting Ghana's economy. The direct Air France route from Paris to Accra, inaugurated on Feb 28, 2017, has facilitated an increase bilateral exchanges between France and Ghana. Whether cultural, tourist, but also economic, and reflects the growing interest of French business in Ghana, especially in strategic sectors such as energy, transportation, infrastructure. French investment in Ghana now exceed $2 billion. Country manager for Air France, KLM, Mez van Ojek, highlighted the role Ghana has played in the success of the airline, as he also announced that they have increased their flights on the route to three times a week. Starting next weekend, Air France will offer three weekly non-stop flights into Accra, the Ouagadougou stop, the Burkina Faso stop has been discontinued and therefore all flights are non-stop in and out of Accra. I know amongst the Ghanaians, including uh, the ambassador, the stop in Ouagadougou was not very much of an advantage, let's put it that way. So we are happy that that has been taken out and that we are only serving Accra. Secondly, and more important maybe, we would like to celebrate, of course, our birthday with you. And for that, we are offering all of you 15%, one five, not five zero, 15% of discount on our website, airfrance.com.gh, by using the discount code 9090ELEGANCE. For some, the action by the airline confirms moves that the country could soon become a hub for the region. 
You're still watching Joy News Prime with me, Emma Davis. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Welcome. Thanks for choosing us. Finance Minister Ken Oforiata has announced government has increased financial support for some of its social intervention programs. According to him, the move is part of efforts to lessen the impact of the IMF program corruption and fiscal consolidation on Ghanaians. The finance minister has been giving more details on the approach that government has been adopting to cushion a lot of Ghanaians. We are really looking at the Youth Start program um, to see how we can inject much more resources into that um, to enable, you know, a sense of um, activity and options as to appropriate um, skills for people and access to financing at cost that that um, at prices that make sense. Um, so that we are looking to do. We've been able to maintain uh, petrol prices within a certain ambit and pray that you know with the war in Israel and all of that that does not get destabilized. Um, so um, it's a constant thought as to how to, for it to trickle down to you know, Kojo the plumber. Um, uh, and I, I think it will take a bit of time, um, but we are moving in the right direction. We should have hope that we've done it before, and we can and will do it, do it again. Um, but true. Any, any, any projections that you've given to us? So because if, if you gauge the pulse of the market, people yeah. it's like things are difficult and all the rest. Are there any projections, not dates, but listen, even when the policy rate goes down, there, there's a lag period. Mm -hmm. If these things should continue stabilizing, it's trending down. Listen, in the next six months or eight months, listen, that effect will be felt because the, the concern is that things are still hard. Yeah, uh, acknowledge. Uh, acknowledge and very difficult. Um, but we are going to come up with, with a growth plan um, with um, the budget, uh, which will be read sometime in the middle of November, uh, which will give you know indications and hope that we, we will be able to um, ensure um, that all of us uh, are inclusively um, um, taking care of um, in the future. Even when you look at um, what we are doing with the fund, uh, you can see that uh, with the LEAP program, um, uh, we have indexed it to make sure that we protect you know, against inflation, and we are also increasing the number of people that may be eligible to it um, to make sure that no one is really sort of left behind. Um, schools feeding rates are being increased, um, uh, and affirmative action is something that we are also going to be to, to be really focused on. So within the embedding the program itself is um, really a good a good faith effort um, to make sure um, that uh, we have a landing zone that is good for all. But in the end, you know, what do you do of the 23 to the 35? What do you do uh, to the entrepreneur? What do you do to the um, SMEs? And, and that's where uh, we'll be finding various packages for them. That's all for Joy News Prime tonight with me, Emma Davis. A pleasure serving you. For more news, do log on to myjoyonline.com. Have a good evening.